Hey there. That was me playing uh, the first section of my arrangement of the tune Desafinado. So today we're taking a look at Desafinado Bajobim. You might not recognize those chords because I'm actually playing the chords that João Gilberto, sorry for butchering his name, is playing. This is another one of those tunes where there are different set of chord changes. If you go to iReal Pro, there are actually two different versions of the chords. One is called the original, which I think is what João Gilberto, the chords João Gilberto is playing. Those are not the chords that you find in the real book, which are the chords most people play. I think, don't quote me on this, but I think the reason there are a different set of changes is because there is the original version, João Gilberto, and then there are more famous versions, like with Stan Getz, for example. Those are the chords that most people play that you find in the real book. Those chords are a little bit more jazz player friendly. They're 1, 6, 2, 5. Chord changes that jazz musicians, especially Bach players, like to solo over, whereas the original changes are a little bit weirder and uh, not so easy to improvise over. I remember one time when I had to play this tune and the bass player brought this, these changes and I was like, what? Those are not the changes I play? And then I saw this version on YouTube, it's like a video with an old concert with João Gilberto where he's playing those chords and I'll link to that video and those are the chords that I transcribed. I have them here, I have the chords that João Gilberto is playing. I don't claim that they're the exact voicings that he's playing, I'm not interested in exact transcription. I just want to learn uh, more or less what he's playing. And then I changed the key and I made a little arrangement with the melody and those chords and all of this stuff is on my Patreon page. So we'll take a look at all that and we'll compare the different chord changes and see what is different about them. And uh, yeah, let's get started, shall we? So I want to start with the actual chords that are in the real book or the new real book. Something that I have talked about before is that if you can play the melody and bass notes at the same time, then it's going to be easy to learn the tune and it's going to be easy to come up with a chord melody arrangement. So in bossa nova, the bass is steady half notes. Not always, but most of the time, so we'll do that. And then if you can play the melody at the same time, To do is add chords. So let's find out where there are different chords. So the first really funny chord that João Gilberto is playing is here. Instead of C, he's playing G sharp diminished. He's playing in a different key. I think the original version is in E. But João Gilberto also played this tune in different keys and different versions over the years. So it's like it's going G minor, G sharp diminished, A minor 7 flat 5. So like the bass motion is going up. So it, that chord is really strange, right? And it's also this chord. I call this the Django Reinhardt chord. I think there is a, even a tune with the Beatles where they play this chord and they called it the Django Reinhardt chord because their guitar teacher 
in Liverpool taught them that chord. And uh, if you know what tune that is, please let me know in the comments. It's hard to give this chord or this specific voicing a name. I guess it's a diminished with a flat 13. Some people write G13 with an A flat on the bass, but that's kind of weird. That's an example of where it's kind of tricky to solo over these chords. It makes more sense to play G minus seven, C seven, right? But I don't think uh, Jao Gilberto wasn't interested in soloing. He played bossa nova. But I did check, he actually is playing that chord. I'm pretty sure that's the chord he's playing, even though he's playing a different key. By the way, I stole some of these chords that I'm gonna talk about later on from that video I mentioned, but also an instructional video that I'll link to as well with a really good uh, uh, lesson on how to play the original chords in E. So I recommend that you check out that video as well and I'll link to it. Then we have this G minor. A7 to D7. That's a D major 7 in Jao Gilberto's. But a lot of people do that. I hear people play that instead of D7. I think it sounds better. And then D7. And the D7 there, Jao Gilberto is playing A on the bottom note. So it's hard to know if he's thinking of that as a diminished chord. If you have a D7 flat 9 and you play the A on the bottom instead of D, you end up with a diminished voicing. This is very, very common in bossa nova. Not only bossa nova, but you want a, a low bass note. So if the fifth happens to be on the bottom string, they play the fifth. So even though this is a D7, I'm not even playing a D, right? I'm playing a diminished chord. But I'm thinking of it as a dominant chord. This can be kind of confusing. But you see it in, this in bossa nova all the time. For example, if you play this C6-9, sometimes they will play just the G on the bass. It's a C chord, but I'm not actually playing a C. I'm playing the fifth as the bass note, which is tricky when you're transcribing it because you know you you're not hearing the actual rate root, even though it's there. If you know what I mean. The reason for all this is that you want a bass note on the bottom string. There's also this misconception that you always have to play alternating bass when you play bossa nova. You don't have to do that at all. You can play the root or the fifth. So if I play from the beginning, F major seven, G seven, you want that flat five there. G minor, C seven. So these are the real book chords. G seven flat nine. Second ending, Jao Gilberto is playing G minor, A7, D minor. And now the last four bars of the A section is where it's really different. The real book says A major 7, B flat diminished, B minor 7, E7. But Jao Gilberto, the original chord changes are this. So that's very different. He's going down chromatically. And you have this thing where the top note stays the same. I think those are maybe the original chords, but I think in the version I checked on YouTube, he's playing C7. 
C7, C13. So A major 7, A flat, dominant sharp 5, G13 to C30, even though we see the different key. And then we have the next section. There you have that 1, 6, 2, 5. Real book says F sharp minor, but Zhao Gilberto is playing A minor there. So it's also changing the melody a little bit. And also here I think it's, it's more an F than an F sharp. Then it's the same. section it's the same G minor here and G B flat minor I think it's a B flat major 7 instead of G minor in Zhao's version to B flat minor chords E flat 7 but Zhao Gilberto is playing G flat major 7 instead of E flat so which I think is much nicer I think that's a way better chord there and then I've heard him do this at the end F major 7 C minor 11, so it's an F major 7 drop 3 with the second inversion to a C minor 11. Okay, so that's those were the differences between those different set of chord changes. So here I have the those chords written out in D major, which is how he's playing those in that video. So those are four pages, and again, those are on my Patreon page, and uh, I also recommend that you check out that video to compare everything, to learn it in different keys. So here we're in D major. The original version is in E major. Again, I recommend that channel, the Bossa Nova lesson, which was really good, but we're gonna play it in D major. So again, I'm not claiming that this is exactly what he's playing, uh, it's just uh, inspired by what I can see that he's playing and hear what he's playing in that video. And we're gonna use a generic bossa nova rhythm. So he's actually playing a D major here. So that's the first inversion. Again, you might say, well, that's funny because it uh, sounds like an F sharp minor, but it's D major. It's again that you want a low bass note, right? And you can't play a really low bass note for a D chord unless you drop D. So that's kind of smart to play this. Plus it creates this very nice, smooth kind of sound. And the rhythm I'm thinking of is like, imagine you have two downbeats and two upbeats. And then the second bar is the opposite, so two upbeats and two downbeats. So down, down, up, 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 down, 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 up, 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 down, down. But we tie the last upbeat, so it's like this. And then I add the bass. generic bossa nova rhythm. So this is not a lesson on complicated bossa nova rhythms. We're just using a standard bossa nova rhythm. I have this app, right, that I talk about all the time called Drum Genius. It's a great app 
Drum Genius. I really strongly recommend getting it. Tons of bossa nova patterns. And this is the one that I like with the brushes. It's the sample of uh, Adam Nussbaum. <laughs> So that's the first section, D major, E9. So I'm holding like a B minor 6 over the E. And then just drop the G sharp to G, you get E minor 9. And then there's funny diminished chord, F sharp minus F flat 5. B, F sharp diminished, which is actually a B9, B7 flat 9 with the 5th on the bottom, E minor 9, F sharp 7, and B6 9. That diminished chord, same thing, it's actually a B, right? E9, E flat major 7 over G. Video, I think he's playing. It's like dropping the seven to six. But I decided not to do that. Let's move on to the second ending. Same thing, but it goes to minor. C sharp, sharp nine. Here's that new section. I decided to not use the bass for that bar. Sometimes it's nice to play the chords without the bass. Plus all my fingers are being used to play those chords or those notes. You could use your pinky, I do that sometimes, but that's not proper guitar technique, but... And then moving on, G diminished, G minor 11, same thing. That's a C13, C sharp, 13 flat 9, but I'm not playing the root, I'm just playing the chord without the bass note. Again, I'm grabbing the, with my on my fingers and just playing the rhythm by itself without the bass. A major, E flat diminished. That chord is a little bit funny, but it's actually just a chromatic approach to the next. Alright, so I'll play this entire thing and you can play along and I'll use that loop. Thank you. 
at the end, I, he's playing this. D major 6. But there you can throw in uh, what I showed you before. It's a D major seven, right, with the A on the bottom. So it's a, I think it's a drop three, right, with the second inversion to an A minor eleven or two bars. I really like that. So this is not a lesson on uh, how to play advanced bossa nova and uh, all the intricacies and nuances of that genre. I have made a video before where I go over. Nelson Faria's book, Brazilian Guitar, and I'll link to that. There I get more into it, more deep into the bossa nova guitar, but I'm definitely not an expert by any stretch of the imagination on bossa nova guitar. I'm just trying to learn it as a jazz musician. But I want to dig deeper than just knowing what's in the real book. That's why uh, I'm doing this. This is another example of why it's good to not learn from the real book, even though I really like the real book and all the real books are great to study. Just be aware that there are other versions because imagine if you go to a gig or a jam session and some people are playing these chords and other the bass player is playing those chords, they would really clash. So it's good to be aware of that there are different versions of tunes. I have done similar lessons on Round Midnight, for example, where there's also many different versions of the chords and the chords that are in the real book are not the best. I should also mention the obvious thing that when you are changing chord for every bar, you have to anticipate the next chord with the rhythm, right? So, and the chord happens before the bass, that's very... Uh, very important to understand if you play bossa nova, and that's the mistake that beginners make. It's also funny that it one the last time he's playing the melody again when it comes back after the B section, he's not playing that diminished chord. There he is playing a regular dominant chord for I don't know why, but it's E minor nine to A seven all of a sudden. So I was messing around with that, trying to play the melody at the same time. And I decided it's not the best key because I can't really get those notes and the chords at the same time. So I just moved it up a half step. And now we're getting into my arrangement of this. One, two, three, four pages. So it's pretty much the same. All of a sudden I can get that open B and grab a chord under it so that's why I thought this is a better key so I'll play this it's a little bit hard to grab that chord and the note at the same time, so I'm kind of grabbing the chord right after I play that note. Here the melody is supposed to be... But I'm listening to Zhao Gibraltar, he's singing. Or actually, he's, he's kind of singing Sometimes he's playing that flat nine and sometimes not. He's definitely playing a regular nine, but he's singing the flat nine. That's kind of wrong according to the theory book, but you know, it's just a note. It's also, I think the tune is about singing out of tune because when this, according to Wikipedia, I think it says something like, this genre, somebody said, oh, now, yeah, that great. All the vocalists who can't sing in tune will have a career because of bossa nova. But, uh, which is really weird because they're 
great singers from the bossa nova era but anyway so this tune is like about singing out of tune what that note is really funny so anyway so here we are i decided to do one regular nine and second time flat nine here you could play regular e or an e major with the e in the bass but i thought it was nice with the g sharp in the bass tricky part I did so you have to grab this chord this is C altered right in the bass because it doesn't really matter I couldn't grab a bass note so I just play this note instead uh, where am I there here's like an F triad over G sharp or sorry F triad over G flat so it's like a diminished major 7 right I'll play the whole example for you. I should also mention that there are many different feels of bossa nova. Right? It could be, I guess there's like more straight or even eights, or sometimes they can be swung. Sometimes bossa nova can be more of a jazz thing, right? When you play, it's supposed to be Brazilian kind of urban music, I guess, but uh, you'll hear like Blue Bossa is a famous example of a tune that is a jazz tune by jazz musicians where a jazz combo right but sometimes they can be really swung here is a sample of the girl from ipanema with uh, oscar peterson and it sounds like this super swung right for me to play this uh, this arrangement but you get the idea so I'll, I'll find another bossa nova here just to give you an idea of different feels this is a very generic one it's a 3-2 clave right I've talked about clave in my Latin guitar video but it's not the clave it's not as, uh, how should I put it, in 
Afro-Cuban music, the music is kind of based on the clave. Here, it's more uh, ornamentation kind of uh, function. It's not uh, as important, or I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it. But uh, yeah, so I'll play this with, I'll try to play my own arrangement over this loop, and we shall see how that goes. <laughs> Up, so let's do from the second ending to one, two, three, four. I should learn to play my own arrangements before I make a video. What do you think? Uh, so yeah, anyway, it's not the point. Uh, the point is not for me to show off. I'm just trying to teach you something here. So as always, these are on my Patreon page. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned something about uh, Bossa Nova guitar and Desafinado. And thank you for your time and attention. And I shall see you next time.